I'd like to introduce to you our governor, the state of California, Governor Newsom. Thank you, Mark. Well, good morning, everybody. Thank you. Um, this is great. It's wonderful to see everybody up here. We, we didn't know how this would come off. This was an idea, as Mark suggested, uh, a few months back uh, out, of, well, out of frustration, exacerbation, <laughs> desperation, uh, a need to get ahead, a need to get our heads on straight, a need to prepare, uh, a need to recognize and reconcile that we just can't take this anymore that the state can't take 2018 again, can't do 2017, 2015 again. You know, 16,600 fires in 2017 and 2018. 139 lives lost, 2.8 million acres destroyed, air quality issues, health consequences of rolling backwards, not moving forward on our greenhouse gas goals, you look down the line, the, the politics of this with an administration, the frustration, and concern around reimbursement. I mean, everything about this, we can't take it anymore. You can't take it anymore. I can't take it anymore. And so the whole purpose of this is sort of set the table, set a different tone and tenor of accountability, responsibility, and resolve. Accountability, because folks are looking for us to lead, take care of them, make sure they're protected and safe. It's a foundational principle that defines everything else, it's, which you, know, you can't talk about everything else unless we set the table on public safety. And so I want to just thank you for what you've done to get here, your leaders in your own right, what you're committed to doing in terms of expressing uh, and sharing today. Uh, your history, your experiences, uh, your willingness to keep an open mind, not be ideological in terms of what you're doing and how you're approaching things, uh, and your willingness to get to know one another. Because at the end of the day, all those fancy plans, all those binders, all those reports and consultants we hire, nothing substitutes for personal relationships. Nothing substitutes for getting someone's you know, text or phone number or just getting to know someone, knowing that they're gonna respond to you or know that they're available to you. And so more important perhaps than anything else, this is about relationship building. And it's about the beginning of a process uh, that we hope uh, continues to build uh, and relationships that continue to evolve over the course, not just of today, but the next uh, few years. I wanna just briefly though, mention a few things. There are 971 million reasons we're in better position this year than last year. That's the increase, the incremental increase in this year's budget. If it's approved, and we are working hard as I speak, in fact, Friday is our sort of tentative draft deadline for the budget uh, to get this budget uh, approved. $50 million that we were able to appropriate early in the process for emergency planning communications to allow you peer to peer to begin to work uh, with your community emergency response teams with you know, folks like Listos and others to begin to adapt and address some localized strategy in terms of uh, your communication strategies. The commitment that we have to finally get to the 20th century, not just the 21st and getting you out of that analog system, 911, to a digitized system, finally down payments on that. That's an embarrassment that I'm saying that in 2019. Uh, but finally, we're gonna make some uh, real uh, progress on our 911 upgrades in this year's budget. Uh, interoperability more broadly, uh, providing more resources in that space, pre-positioning, uh, historic investments, still not where we need to be, and I get that, but more investments on pre-positioning than we've seen in the past, engines and personnel. Uh, we are outfitting for those that you know need to see things, to believe things, and I hear that every time we're at a scene, people wanna see something in the sky, they wanna know something's being done. Well, finally, we're outfitting those C-130s, <laughs> finally upgrading, I think, what, $109 million 
to upgrade our old Hueys. So we'll have some Blackhawk helicopters actually going to fly at night uh, that are also uh, going to be outfitted uh, with the latest modern suppression technology uh, and technology that ultimately do justice to the complexity of our fire and fire season. The issues around LIDAR, the issues related to satellite technology, we finally got a breakthrough with the Pentagon without getting too much in the details of that, probably getting kicked virtually behind me. We've been acknowledging that, but finally making some progress as it relates to those relationships. The uh, issues uh, obviously on hardening, issues related to thinning, fuels management, scientifically based fuels reduction, strategies to focus on socioeconomics. We haven't focused on that as much in the past. That was reflected in that executive order, those 35 high profile, or at least targeted and higher profile projects that were part uh, of the renewed efforts to be a little bit more targeted in terms of addressing the most at need communities that are most at risk. And we learned that obviously in Butte and elsewhere, folks that don't have the mobility opportunities that many of us take for granted, people that don't have the ability to afford a vehicle, people that are in mobile home parks, uh, people uh, that are struggling based on their age or infirmity uh, to make sure that they uh, have adequate resources and that we are making sure that we're creating fuel breaks and fire breaks and evacuation plans as a priority in those communities. Those, by the way, 35 high profile projects are already underway. Some, I think, Mark, we, we had Tom, one of those projects was on the docket for 10 years from now. Yeah. And we were able to get that project moving and impacting 200 plus communities. You know, we work with the environmental community, it wasn't easy, but to move some of the CEQA issues forward, but we thought that was the right thing to do. And I wanna thank the environmental community. It wasn't an easy thing for folks to accept, but they were willing to accept it emergency declaration before an emergency so that we can move those projects forward, bring them to the forefront as opposed to wait for an emergency declaration after a disaster occurred. Uh, more focus, more intentionality, a more aggressive and collaborative and coordinated response candidly than we've seen in the past. More resources and a more resourceful mindset in this space. And it's not just around wildfires, it's also around earthquakes. I, you know, I'm a fifth generation San Francisco. And uh, thank you to <laughs> one voice in the room. But, uh, you know, you can't grow up in the city without, you know, thinking every day about where you're driving, you know, and where you're standing, and you know, whether or not you're prepared. You know, we finally, we've got 100% of the money now for that early warning system. Uh, we said that last year, it turns out it wasn't the case. This year we finally do have the money for that earthquake uh, early warning system, 100% of the money now made available for that. We'll start getting that technology deployed across the state. I appreciate some of the work that's been done in some parts of the state, but at scale, we'll get that technology. Then we're gonna figure out a way to fund it uh, at an operational level into the future, but we're committed to that as well. It's all around uh, mutual aid. It's all around recognizing uh, that there is no jurisdiction when it comes to emergency uh, response, emergency preparedness, emergency planning. Resiliency, it's in our DNA. If it's not, uh, you know, you haven't been paying attention. Uh, one thing is self-evident, and I know we have folks in all political stripes, and I just wanna make a point about that. Uh, thank each and every one of you, uh, to every right-wing conservative and left-wing Democrat, thank you for giving a damn about your community, about your family, about your neighbors. Thank you for the work you do. This is not a political space. Uh, and we're gonna be there for you. Uh, you didn't have to vote for the folks in the Capitol. You, you, know, you could be out protesting us. We care about you. We're gonna have your back. We're gonna take care of your constituents. And I just wanna make that point. There is no politics in this space. But there's also a, a point of principle and pride as well uh, in this state in particular that I think we are moving past 
some of these stale ideological debates. And I think we're also recognizing that, you know, you may call it global warming, you may call it climate change, uh, but something ain't right. You know, the hots are getting hotter. The wets are getting a lot wetter. The dries are getting a lot drier. And that acuity requires a different response and a different approach. I remember Rob Watson, old friend of mine, big environmentalist, said, you know, Mother Nature is nothing more than chemistry, biology, and physics. She bats last, and she bats a thousand. And it's a way of thinking about the world we're living in. And I think we need to be prepared for the worst. We think we experienced the worst, but I don't know that we have. And so that requires a different level of sophistication, a different level uh, of collaboration. And forgive me, I don't want to continue, uh, but I want to just make this point uh, that we uh, are grateful and we admire you. We want to thank you for uh, being here. And I want to just thank, I, I noticed a lot of guys behind me. I got to think about that, but, but these poor folks, you know, I don't know. I, by the way, 73% of my administration are women, except here, obviously. Uh, but, uh, but I just want to acknowledge um, them. You know, that Tom's an expert in forests. It, it's his life's passion and purpose, his understanding and nuance of vegetation. I mean, all these issues, this is what he does. And I'm so proud that he's in this position uh, running CAL FIRE. I mean, Stanley, how many, I mean, even if we didn't want to get to know each other, my gosh, the amount of time we've had to spend together. Uh, <laughs> commissioners has been doing an incredible job um, over the last few years and, you know, so many just tragic moments we've spent together, but, but being there for families and being there for loved ones, I just want to applaud him and his team. Uh, to the general, uh, I mean, we got the best damn National Guard in the United States of America. Uh, no one comes close. Uh, and I just want to thank him for his incredible leadership. And no one could substitute for Mark and his, his experience, uh, his leadership. I remember we were there meeting Washington, D.C. And, uh, you know, I was like being with the Kardashians or something. <laughs> uh, all those FEMA folks wanting to get, you know, photographs and selfies. Uh, he's, a, he's a national brand. And, uh, and I want to just thank Mark for, for your leadership as well. Uh, and if he's not embarrassed, he should be, but he's done a great job. Uh, and to CSAC and to the League of Cities, thank you to the leadership. You guys really stepped up, and I'm really grateful to you um, for, you know, getting this and, and, and being willing to, to organize this on pretty short notice. You guys have been you know, incredible partners, and we can't do this without you. And I'll just close by saying this. If you don't like the way the world looks when you're standing up, stand on your head and go local. Because mm -hmm. remarkable things are happening at the local level. And I just want to acknowledge that because all of you demonstrably proven that. So, you know, there's not, there's not a problem in this space that hasn't been solved by one of you in this room. The question is how we can scale your example, how we can spread your example, how we can share your example. That's the spirit of this day, uh, and that's the spirit that defines this moment. People are counting on us, literally, people's lives are on the line. Yep. And I want to thank you for putting yourselves out there uh, and holding yourselves uh, to this higher level of accountability. Uh, enjoy the day and let this begin uh, a process of collaboration, the likes of which this state has never experienced in its history. Thank you all very, very much.